Welcome to Bottle Carbonating for Fools. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to safely and properly bottle carbonate your beer, cider, mead, and wine. Let's get started. All right, so the key word here is safety. And this is, uh, I'm calling this for dummies because if you don't do this properly or safely, you are a dummy. <laughs> you will cause a problem that will probably cause a bottle to explode. So what is bottle carbonating? Bottle carbonating is taking some sort of sugar and putting it into the bottle with your brew that is still active and allowing those sugars to be fermented on, creating CO2 or creating carbonation in the bottle. It's all in the name. Now there's a little bit more to it than that. It's not just it is simple, but it has some in more in-depth things. So let's first talk about your yeast and knowing if they can actually continue to carbonate or bottle carbonate. Every yeast has a cap. I'm putting air quotes around this because the, the cap, ABV cap for each yeast or alcohol by volume cap for each yeast is kind of stretched. And some yeast, if they are properly fermenting with healthy fermentation, can go past their cap. So not super important to know. What's important to know is how much sugar is left in your brew. So if you are, let's say you're making a beer, most beer, most beers do not finish dry, meaning they do not finish at a gravity reading of 1.000. What's important to have is a hydrometer. Hydrometer is a measuring tool to tell you what the specific gravity or the bricks scale of a brew is. That tells you what your possible alcohol by volume is which you wanna know anyways, because as you make your brew, you're generally, you wanna have as much information as possible. So get a hydrometer, take a starting gravity, meaning you measure the gravity before the fermentation, and then once you see the fermentation slow down slash finish, um, you're gonna take another gravity reading. Let's say our beer we're making started at um, 1.060. After the primary, we're gonna call it, ended at 1.010 and stopped. It's pretty normal for beer. That means that you have used up 50 points of gravity and you have this whole equation. Anyways, that doesn't matter. What matters is if I want to bottle carbonate that brew, while the yeast have stopped fermenting, this does not mean that they are done completely. You are going to now want to introduce priming sugar into this brew when you move it over and then bottle it. Priming sugar is essentially just sugar that the yeast can eat, raising the gravity back up, and then they, in the bottles, they re-ferment again and create more carbonation. So that's, that's the bottle carbing for, for beer. You can do the same thing with wine or mead. I keep saying wine, you're probably not gonna carbonate a wine, but mead or cider, stuff like that. Priming sugar is the key here. You want to use some sort of priming sugar. Now that could be regular old, what you buy at the store called priming sugar. Could be just your normal table sugar. It could be honey. It could be any sort of sugar in the universe. What's important here, and this is where the dummy aspect comes up. If you use too much priming sugar and your yeast are able to consume all of that sugar, you will create a bottle bomb, which literally means that bottle will explode because it has too much pressure on it. So you need to use a calculator, a priming sugar calculator, which I will put one down in the description. Get on there and you have to fill a little bit of information on there on the calculator, but it will tell you how much sugar to introduce for each thing. So if you're trying to use regular table sugar, it's right there. It will give you the exact information on how to, how much to use, how much sugar to use to properly bottle carbonate. I've seen people introduce way too much priming sugar and those yeast wake back up and they start partying. And then next thing you know, that party explodes and it's everywhere. Now there's the other side of this world where let's say you haven't, um, you don't have a hydrometer, you don't have any gravity readings, and you're kind of flying by the seat of your pants, which is fine. I mean, it's not, not necessarily great. I'll tell you that. You can somewhat manage. 
you need to wait again until that fermentation is done. You're going to assume that the fermentation is done by seeing all of your uh, CO2 bubbles after fermentation stop. It'll just look like it's still, whatever you're fermenting. And then do your priming sugar and that stuff. Use a calculator, use a calculator. Please, 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 please. It's down in the description. Use that calculator to properly do this so you do not explode things. There are some shortcut ways to, um, to bottle carbonate that people have created. So there's like these little carbonation tablets uh, you can buy and they come like, it's just like sugar. I mean, basically sugar dextrose in its little form and they're pre-measured amounts. If you're doing like 12 ounce bottles with beer or mead or cider, um, you put those in there and then over time they dissolve. How long does it take to uh, bottle carbonate? It really depends on the temperature at which you're storing your brew and um, sometimes how high ABV that brew is. If it is a very high ABV, let's say 12% above um, brew, it might take you three to four weeks to fully bottle carbonate. If you're doing something that's like low ABV, you know, it's a 5% or something, it might take two weeks, three weeks, but I would say between two and four weeks is a, a good estimate on how long it'll take for you to fully bottle carbonate. Um, I got two more topics. Let's say that when you're bottle carbonating, uh, you put your stuff in, your priming sugar in, you're waiting for it to bottle carbonate. You're storing it in a room temp situation, not too cold, not too warm. You're storing it there, you're waiting for that to finish. I generally like to, at that two week mark, take a bottle and open that bottle up and then see if it's carbonating, see if it's working. It's just a good way to kind of check up, see if it's happening. Um, if your yeast are able to, to continue fermentation, they will. If you have opened up a bottle and it's overcarbonated, the whole batch could be overcarbonated. An easy fix for this is to take your bottles and put them into the fridge because the yeast will stop fermenting because it'll get too cold for them and then you'll just have to drink them from there. Again, that's where you're knowing your yeast cap is helpful because then you can um, actually know if they can continue to ferment. My last little topic is back sweetening. Let, so let's say that you're making, this is not really appropriate for beer, but let's say you're making a cider or a wine or a mead, something where you're trying to have a little more sweetness within it. Um, I guess you could sweeten up a beer, but most people don't. You can use some non-fermentable sugars. So there's a lot of them on the market now. Um, essentially these sugars are not able to be consumed by the yeast, which is what makes them non-fermentable. So I use stuff like erythritol, there's things like xylitol, there's, uh, what are some other ones? I'll put all the options up here right now. You can back sweeten to your liking with that, as sweet as you want your brew, before you bottle it, and then introduce your priming sugar. So your priming sugar will be eaten by the yeast, non-fermentable not. It's a good balance to get sweetness while also still, you know, getting your bottle carbonation. Do not be a dummy and start throwing in regular sugar going, my yeast won't be able to eat this. It doesn't work that way. That ABV cap is important. Some people watching this right now are gonna say, well, I know that my yeast stops at 10% and I, my fermentation ended at 9.5. So if I put enough sugar to get to 10% and then a little bit more, my yeast will cap out. No, they won't. Don't do that. That's stupid, okay? If you see someone doing that, that's stupid. There's a 5% chance that works. And then if it does, congrats. When it doesn't and a bottle explodes, you look like an idiot. So be safe. Priming sugar is your friend, whatever way you wanna use it. If it's just regular table sugar, if it is honey, if it's priming sugar, if it's those little carbonation tablets, Essentially, bottle carving is super nice if you do it right. Be patient with it, get a hydrometer so you can accurately know when your brew is done and go and bottle carbonate some stuff. If you have a question, concern, leave it down in the comments, of course. And if you enjoyed this video, do all the things. I have a video on kegging. If you are someone interested in force carbonating, my video is just one of a bunch about kegging, so feel free to check other people's out. But carbonation is very, very nice.
Carbonation leads to a better mouthfeel for brews. It just helps things out. It can take a really uh, kind of weak brew sometimes and bolster it up. Um, here's a science term to finish this video off. When you carbonate something in any fashion, there's a thing called carbonic acid, which is what is instilled into that brew. Carbonic acid is an acid, brings up um, some brightness to your brew. So generally speaking, you want there to be a little sweetness to contrast your carbonic acid that's introduced. I hope this has helped. I hope you will go and safely carbonate some brews and I will see you in a future video. Cheers.